Hello, my friends. I got my Betty Page Psychotronic Film Society shirt that I got from a fearless leader, Michael Flores, when I helped him move in 2005. And there is the historic Pickwick Theater right there where I saw the mummy when I was five years young back in spring of 62 for only five stinking cents. Yeah, my dad paid. <laughs> yeah, because I'm cheap. I don't pay for my own way. I let my dad pay, even though it's only five cents. <laughs> And I got my money's worth, even though it was only five stinking cents. <laughs> but they also accept scents that smell good. Yeah, right there, the Star Pickwick Theater. And I'm going to show you where I begged my dad on hands and knees so I could see the mummy back in spring of 62 when I was five years young. They're showing the Lone Ranger now. And they're showing, the, look at Monsters University. Monsters University. But, you know, and the heat, you know, that sounds like a fun movie. But there's nothing to do with real monsters. It's like cartoon, comical, animated stuff. And here is the infamous ticket booth where my dad paid five cents to let me see the mummy in spring of 62 when I was five years young. And my mom took me here to see the Hammer version of The Phantom of the Opera with Herbert Lom as the Phantom. That was the first Phantom movie I saw. Well, I saw clips of the Lon Chaney one on the toy that grew up on Channel 11, WTTW. Home of Wild Chicago, like back in the 90s. But... Back in the 1960s, you know, they had to show the toy that grew up on Sunday afternoons at like 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock. We'd watch that when I got home from church. And they had the old Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with John Barrymore, a half-hour version, an edited version, and a half-hour version of Nosferatu, the vampire, with Max Schreck, 1922. We're talking about the silent version. So I was begging my dad on hands and knees right here, and I was down here like this, and I said, Dad, please, I want to see the mummy. Dad, please, I want to see the mummy. You know, I want to see the mummy, you know, so he reaches down, he says, all right, David, if it means that much to you, so, so I ran in there before he changed his mind, so I saw the mummy here for five cents, spring of 62, when I was five years young, and right now I'm 56 years young, so I'm, you know, you know I'm like uh, 51 years younger than I was back in spring of 62 when I was five, see, I get younger every year, <laughs> That guy probably thinks I'm crazy walking down there. And a ticket booth guy probably, oh yeah, that's that rock guy. Watch one too many monster movies. Yeah. They might not Dr. Swap Java. Actually, Trader Joe's free sample. Go, go, go. Ah, that's good Java. You know, like Elaine says on Seinfeld. Ah. Yeah, she does that in Seinfeld when she's drinking her Java in the coffee shop. And here we are, an infamous Starbucks. Yeah, and, um where I filmed scenes for my House of Zombies. I was sitting here by the window with Janet back like in 1996. That's when I was filming House of Zombies. How's it going, man? Have I met you? I'm David The Rock Nelson, the monster movie guy. I'm the guy that makes monster movies. Yeah, I know some of the people in here, yeah. But I'll see you. Yeah, I was just uh, telling my friends about, you know, that I saw the mummy down the street at the historic Pickwick Theater when I was five years old. Spring of 62, my dad paid. It was like five cents to see it. That was the, the one with Christopher Lee as the mummy. That was the Hammer version. And then I saw the Hammer version of the Phantom of the Opera like a year later when I was seven. And then uh, I saw King Kong vs. Godzilla there when I was like eight years old for 25 cents. My mom paid. And uh, Wait Until Dark in 66, I saw that. And I saw Dr. No one from Russia with Love, Double Bill, Sean Connery, James Bond like when I was eight years old there. They had, like Double Bill, James Bond movies and stuff. And Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston back in 68. You saw that in the Pickwick. That was a, that's a great movie. The original. Great music, great story. The, the remake stinks. Yeah. Hey, I'll see you. Yeah, feed me on Facebook, David Rock Nelson. And you can see uh, previews of my movies on uh, YouTube. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so I'm a shameless self-promoter. And I let people know who I am. I should go back there and give them my flyer. Where is that? I think I got one more devil in There we go. Trying to find a copy for uh, Devil Ant. I know I've got some flyers in my pocket. There we go. Good, I got a couple flyers left. Yep, there we go. Okay. Oh. Sorry I was so loud. You guys want one of my flyers? I make monster movies. That's me and Spangoolie. David Rock Nelson. I'll see you. Well, I offered him my flyer. They said no, but that's the way it goes. 
You know, well, you know, they, they probably wrote me off as some weirdo that's watched one too many movies. One too many monster movies, that is. And that's the uh, metro station down there in Historic Park Ridge. It's that building that looks like the village of Frankenstein. Got that Victorian look. And there's the Park Ridge Library where I go and I send emails every day. There goes a train going by. It's a metro train. We're in good old uptown Park Ridge, Illinois, where I grew up in the glorious, monster booming retro 1960s. And down the street was Ben Franklin. The building's still there. Now, it was later home of Pioneer Press, where my, my mom worked for the Park Ridge Advocate, down there a block south at Ben Franklin Five and Dime Store. In, in 1961, they had the monster cards, you know, spook stories of Frankenstein and the rapper. Then they had monster laughs the next year in 62. Those are those mini cards that are perforated. Where there's like 12 to a pack. They got the War of the Colossal Beast. They got, I was a teenage werewolf, teenage Frankenstein, how to make a monster, uh, movies like that. You know, the brain that wouldn't die, that, that bald-headed monster on them, you know, that's Big Eddie Carmel who passed away. And they got those monsters on those cards. That was in spring of 62, that's five cents. Then they had the King Kong cards in spring, uh, 1964 with King Kong and King Kong versus Godzilla that I saw over there at the Pickwick when I was the same year when I was eight years young, right there at the historic Pickwick Theater. And that's a 150 to 175 years young now. It's a historic landmark. But the week that it came out, King Kong versus Godzilla, like that same week, I went down to Ben Franklin like the same day they had the King Kong trading cards with pictures from the movie on there. Five cents for five trading cards with a stick of that nice, great tasting pink bubble gum. The best tasting bubble gum on the planet and in the whole universe. And um, then they had combat cards when the combat TV show was on in the 60s. The Untouchables trading cards in 1962. That was like uh, the final season of The Untouchables. The Untouchables on from like 59 to 62 with Robert Stack as Elliot Ness. My childhood boyhood hero. I wanted to be tough like Elliot Ness. When I was in kindergarten, I would We'd raid the girls' dollhouse, and I would make a fake Tommy gun, machine gun, out of the Tonka toys, and I'd arrest the girls. I'd say, come on, guys, let's arrest, let's arrest the girls. Let's take over the dollhouse, because let's use it as our detective office. So we'd arrest the girls. I said, all right, you're all under arrest. I'm Elliot Ness, and this is the Untouchables. You know, you're all under arrest. And we would use yarn to tie their hands behind their back, and we'd tie it like a bow knot. So as soon as my teacher showed up, I'd pull the string and release you know, let him go real quick so the teacher wouldn't catch me. Yeah, but I always get caught, man. She said, David, you can't do that anymore. That's the girls' dollhouse. That's, you know, I want to use it as our detective office, you know. Uh, a week or two later, I'd do it again. I kept getting caught. Teacher said, David, you can't do that. Okay, I'll see you. I told that story to um, Bruce Gordon, who played Frank Nitty on the Untouchables TV show, like, like that last, last two seasons, whatever. He was on a lot of episodes. He's one says, Ness, Ness. I've had it up to here with Ness. A lousy 25 G's. I need to make some big money. Oh, come on, that's nickels and dimes. Peanuts. A lousy 25 G's. See, to him, 25 G's was like a quarter, I think. Because they wanted big money, you know. But you, know, you gotta love Bruce Gordon. I met him and Paul Paterni, who played Agent Lee Hobson, Elliot Ness's right hand man on The Untouchables. I met them both in June of 2004, right before I went to the Monster Bash that year. And I told them that story how I arrested the girls in kindergarten over at Washington School. With Misha Sluter was my teacher. Yeah, I was in kindergarten two years. Now you know why, I was like kind of a troublemaker. Didn't totally grow up, I wasn't mature enough to make it in the first grade. Because I wanted to you know, arrest the girls and play Untouchables when I should have been studying my homework or whatever. I, I brought the Frankenstein model kit cover to school because my brother got the Aurora Frankenstein model and he gave me the box. And so I brought the box to school and I said, yeah, and I, I showed it for show and tell. And teacher says, but David, we don't do show and tell anymore. That was our new teacher after Mrs. Sluter. I said, yeah, well, I wanted to show it. She said, well, okay, David, if you brought it, I'll let you do it this time. So I showed him the Frankenstein model kit. So I'll see you. That was, I showed that for show and tell, man. That's a cool model. And I got a replica of that in my dungeon now that I got from Keith Sarno from Milwaukee who makes those uh, plaques. And I got the Frankenstein from him, and I got a Wolfman and a creature from him for like 10 bucks each. I like little plaques with the uh, Aurora model kit cover on him. Okay, I'll see you.